from a wet and windy Newfoundland, Canada. My name is Deanne and this is Stitching on the Rock. Uh, welcome everyone to the third episode of my Floss Tube channel. I want to say thank you to everyone who liked and commented on my first two videos. I really appreciate that. Um, I also want to say a big shout out to all my subscribers. Uh, I'm over 90 now after just two videos. That might not seem like much to some people, but I'm very impressed with that for myself because when I started this, the only thing, person I thought that would uh, subscribe is my son's father who said he would because he said, go for it, give it a try. And to get over 90 now is pretty awesome to me. Um, feel free if you're, as I was saying, sorry, my video stopped for some reason. Um, if you're new, feel free to like and comment. Um, if you find something that you enjoy, please subscribe. And if you're back for another look, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, what can I say? Um, life in the last two weeks has been pretty slow and boring. Uh, my son is back for the uh, almost the second week of school after they were online for three. So far, so good knock on wood, that he's uh, healthy and getting back into the swing of things and enjoying seeing all his friends in person again. My life, uh, the most exciting thing is that I took my car in for an oil change. I tend not to go out as much as I could, um, you know, avoiding crowds and all that fun stuff that you all know about and I won't talk about too much. So with that such boring life, I was trying to come up with something that I could talk about. Well, obviously my channel is mostly stitching and I'll get to that now in a second. But um, I thought I'd tell you a little about, about where I live. Um, some of you probably aren't from Newfoundland. Some of you probably have never heard of Newfoundland. So uh, just a, like a couple of minute blurb on that. And if you want to hear more, I can tell you some fun Newfoundland words, fun Newfoundland stay, sayings. Fun Newfoundland town names, anything like that, comment if you'd like to hear some more about it. If not, comment and tell me. Don't bother. Um, so we are the uh, 10th province of Canada. Um, we were the last to join in 1949. Um, the capital city is St. John's, which is where I'm from. And not to confuse it with St. John, New Brunswick, because it has been, uh, male-wise. <laughs> um, they spell out the word Saint. We abbreviate the word saint. We have an apostrophe S. Yes, they don't. So St. John's as opposed to St. John. Um, I am about 20 minutes from the most easterly point in North America, which means I'm closer to Europe than I am to British Columbia on the other side of Canada, which is a pretty cool thing. And oh, how to pronounce the province. That's the last little thing I'll tell you. Um, there are two ways that we'll accept. If you're not from here, you certainly can pronounce it the way it spells, new found land, and we'll take that. And if you're from here, you'll probably know, or talk to someone from here, you probably know, we like to drop letters. We like to drop letters at the beginning of the words. We like to drop letters at the end of the words. We like to drop letters in the middle of the words. We believe words have too many letters. So we take found, F-O-U-N-D, in the middle of the word, and turn it into fun, F-U-N. So it's Newfoundland, and that's how you pronounce our province. Um, okay, enough about that. <laughs> Let's get on to stitching. So, um, oh, first off, a little continuation of my first video. I said in it that I thought I had the first piece I ever stitched, and I couldn't find it. Well, I was digging out my uh, Valentine's decorations a couple of days ago, and ta-da! The very first thing I ever stitched. I did notice when I was looking at it today that for some reason I have three little, I guess, holly berries. I don't know why I had them with Valentine's. Well, it could be Valentine's because of the heart, but it could be Christmas because I'm pretty sure this is holly. But I'm missing the three little berries on this side. So I don't know if the pattern had them or I just left them out, forgot them. So I think I might try and match up the DMC and just stitch three little stitches in there to make it more balanced looking. But, ta-da. There you go. Um... So my work's in progress. Uh, this two over the two weeks, um, I've stitched on eight out of my eleven. I believe it was works in progress that I showed you. One of them I didn't. I had planned to stitch on, but I had a reason why I didn't. 
Um, so that would have been nine, which wouldn't have been too bad. So first up is what I said was going to be my focus, which was my work, my mystery cell by the Cross Stitch Studio. The theme is Under the Sea. Um, I'm avoiding the Facebook group because for the first time in my life, I want a surprise. I would say Christmas was terrible for me. I was always the one poking at the corners and trying to figure out what they were. I hate surprises. But this one I want to keep as a surprise. Um, so I'm only going to go onto the Facebook group when they release the next page. So they have released three pages. I'm working on the second one. I'm about halfway, a little over halfway done that one. So I'm trying to see a half a page behind. I'm hoping to catch up at some point, but I don't know when. Life next week will be a bit busier because I have a scrapbooking retreat next weekend, so I won't get any stitching done Friday, Saturday, or, or Sunday. I might get some Sunday night if I'm not too tired, but we'll see. Anyway, no before pit, no completed picture because it's a mystery, a sal, and so I'm gonna try. Hopefully, this will work to put the picture of what it looked like before or at the last video up in the corner for all of them. If not, you're just gonna have to look at what they're supposed to look like and what I've got done so far. <laughs> I'm not tech. So here we are. It's kind of hard to see the second page I've been working on because I've been working on the really light threads. Uh, but that's, this is page one and page five of the pattern. It's the second page they've released, but it's page five of the pattern. The third page they released was the second page, so it'll come over this way. So there you go. I got uh, three, about 3,388 stitches put in it since my last video. Okay, and I told you last time for everything else, I'm going to try and stitch on that every day. Uh, there was a day or two that I didn't get. One I was really tired and the other one I I only stitched on the one piece and didn't get to that one. Um, but for everything else I said I was going to just <laughs> draw, draw one out at a time and see which one I ended up with and stitch on that. And that's what I did thanks to my it says marshmallow raid one of my raid done pieces so it's not just for, to look pretty. I took all the others put them on little pieces of paper and I draw one out and that's what I stitch on and then I go back to my sal and I don't put that piece of paper back in until I draw the next one out so I'm not actually stitching on the same thing two two rotation to spots at a time uh, together okay so the first one I pulled out was um, Jeanette Douglas's um, oh I forgot to tell you that the the sal is stitched Full cross stitch one over one on 28 count. Everything I stitch is 28 count except for one little one I have there is 32 count. And everything is full cross stitch but some are one over one and some are two over two. And I'm gonna try to remember to tell you which is which. But anyway, the first thing I pulled out was Jeanette Douglas's Fleur de Lis sampler on the Canadian Journey pieces. And I went to start stitching on it and I discovered I didn't have all the supplies. So I had to place an order. I placed it with traditional stitches in Calgary. It's not here yet. I only did it a few days ago. Um, so that piece got put aside right away. And when the supplies come, hopefully I'll get a stitch on it. I thought for this, for, a, for the rotation, I would try to get maybe two or three rows on their specialty threads and specialty stitches and some of them are complicated so but if I got two to three rows done that would be starting the right direction um, next I chose uh, Mirabilia's Mermaid of Mermaids of the Deep Blue this one and once again hopefully where I was last video will come up in the corner and I didn't stitch a lot on anything other than my um, style, style because I haven't stitched on any of these in over a year so I kind of wanted to see where I was um, you know if there were any errors in the area what I needed to do so I only put in 75 stitches just to get a, a handle on where I was so first of all this is what I have done totally so the bottom mermaid is almost completely done just a few beads and treasures and that and the second mermaid 
I finished all of her skin and I started stitching on her hair. So that's where I am. And that um, will tell me. And it's stitched two over two on this beautiful aqua color. Um, and the, uh, the fabric names, I wish I could tell you. <laughs> I'm not very good at that. I'm going to, I'm doing better. Actually, I did write it down in the last video. Don't know exactly where that is. I did write it down. And it should be nearby, but I don't see it. Sorry. If I, if I find it, I will write it on the pictures, the, the, uh, the last video's pictures. I'm sorry. Um, okay, anyway, moving on. Uh, the next one, uh, piece I pulled out was the Bent Creek Waiting for Santa. And this is the one I'm doing on 32 count, 2 over 2 on 32 count on this hand dyed, lovely kind of. So all I did with him was I finished his scarf and I continued on down in his body, which was only about 50 stitches. But once again, I wanted to know where I was on it from last time. Uh, next up was um, my first Heaven and Earth design. And this is uh, Mini Hometown Hero Baseball by Donna Gelsinger. Here. And where I was last video, and you might notice a bit of a change because I changed the fabric. Um, I had difficulty seeing the navy blue. Uh, I mostly stitch at night now and it was dark and dark fabric and dark thread and I just couldn't do it. So it is now being stitched on this beautiful sapphire blue uh, 28 count one over one and you might notice that I've also tried out diagonal stitching on this piece and I actually am enjoying it. Um, really great with Pattern Keeper because it put, allows you to put in the diagonal lines. So I put in, uh, I restitched the amount of stitches I had in the other piece and I put in, in total, 1,048. So I had 300 and something done on it before. So that's that one. Next up, and I don't have the original picture and I printed one off and the picture is terrible. Uh, this is Mirabilia Ada. And she looked a whole lot prettier in real life. And unfortunately that, that's what my printer gave me. Um, for some reason, I keep losing the Mirabilia pictures. I have to try and find a place to put them so I don't lose them. So you'll see what I, what, where it was um, before in the last video. And I put in 112 stitches on her. And this is, well, this is totally what I had done. But what I stitched on was mostly at the bottom of her wing, right? The, this um, teal -y color and a little bit of her skin uh, just to see where I was. And she is stitched a two over two on this op hand dyed opalescent kind of fabric. Um, <clears throat> next was another, well, she's a uh, Designed under Nora Corbett, but it's the same designer that designs the Mirabilia's and it's G blue once again the, the original <coughs> Excuse me. The original picture has disappeared So I told you in the last video I had replaced this chronic that um, It's here because I it was not available And then I replaced these beads that are on our arms here and around her head So I just didn't think the orangey red beads worked with the colors in our dress and that. So what I did with her, I put in 283 stitches on her and I did the chronic on one side of her. Uh, it's a, like a teal blue color that I picked. I think it works really nice with her dress. Much better than the, the really dark one that was originally de uh, designed. Um, next was um, the Quick Stitch Snowflake Wonder by uh, Lisa Victoria and I didn't have very much done 
um, in the last video because I had started that one um, just before I ended up hurting myself and so I had I don't know a couple of hundred stitches in it um, which was not much at all and this is what I have done now and once again I'm gonna try the um, diagonal stitching he's done one over one on the 28 count and I put in um, 355 stitches so just enough to see where I was and what how the stitching was going and um, finally last one I worked on in the last two weeks was the Heaven and Earth Design Mini Pride and Prejudice by Amy Stewart which I said was part of a larger bookcase and I forgot to look up the name of the bookcase but um, it's all hero um, romance books and this was one I just started so I this once again is one over one on 28 count and I have I had like 20 stitches I think put in on the last video because I just wanted to call it my new year new start so I wanted to say I had started it so I got 253 stitches in it and once again I'm trying the diagonal stitching let's see if I can can't really see very well there isn't a whole lot to see but it's a little bit of the sky and I think there's some flowers here I'm just starting um, and I love this because Pride and Prejudice is one of my favorite books um, and then I sort of cleaned up my stitching area this week this past week and I found a UFO so it's going into my little jar of works in progress to see and it's um, another one with specialty stitches and that so it's called um, it's from um, the sampler house sorry and it's called very Victorian shamrock sampler so I don't know if you can see that very well without too much glare so well I'm not having a whole lot of luck with videotaping today from the second time my video cut out just I was showing you um, the shamrock sampler but that was the only thing I had left to show you for uh, um, stitching wise. Um, I was just going to uh, talk a little bit about my plans. Um, nothing written in stone, but um, March next month is uh, March Madness month, which is based off of the basketball tournament in the States. Um, but it's kind of complicated with brackets and all that type of stuff. So I was kind of gonna not bother with it this year I thought instead I would make a March, uh, Mirabilia March, because I have three works in progress and I have several in my stash and Jade Blue is pretty close to being finished, uh, just finishing the Chronix and the Beads. So I thought I might go through and possibly kit up another one in case I got Jade finished next month and I was going to rotate my Mirabilias with my Mystery Cell, because it could be March Mystery Cell as well, but... <laughs> So that's kind of in my head and I haven't worked out all the details in that, but we'll see. Um, so that was the last thing I was going to talk to you about and I guess I'll see you again in a couple of weeks.